The perfect stir fry relies on only two things, and it's not the recipe or the ingredients. It's the technique and the wok itself. So what kind of wok should you be using? How do you season it? What is seasoning anyway? Can you fix a ruined wok? I'm gonna cover all of this and those elusive wok skills you need in this episode. Let's do it, my friends. Let's Wok 101. One of the most common things that people talk about when they're talking about wok cooking is seasoning. What is it? How do you get it? Do you need to do it? What happens if you ruin it? Okay, so this chapter of the video is going to tell you all about all of those things. So first off, let's talk about the wok that you get straight out of the box. Now this is my Mako wok and this one is carbon steel, but it's pre-seasoned. So some of the work has been done for you. Regardless of whether you have a pre-seasoned or a regular carbon steel wok, the first seasoning process will be the same. So let's run through how you prepare your wok for the first time out of the box. First of all, you want to gently clean your wok with some mild soapy water, give it a dry and then place it over a medium high heat. Now I'm just going to let this heat up a little bit. Now you might not be able to see on the camera, but I can just start to see a little bit of smoke happening here in my wok. So at this point, I'm going to add in some oil. This is just a regular vegetable oil. And then just use some paper towel, wipe that around your wok. Typical oils to use for this are vegetable oil, peanut oil, rice bran oil. These are all oils that have a fairly high smoke point. So they are better suited for higher temperatures. Now this is just the start of the seasoning process. Because my Mako wok is pre-seasoned, this is enough to kind of get you started. If you have an uncoated carbon steel wok, then you wanna keep repeating this heating up and oiling process until you get a beautiful color all around the base of your wok. But at this point, my wok is ready to use. Now the whole point of this process is to give your carbon steel a naturally non-stick surface. So we're not talking about like the non-stick coating that you get on non-stick pans. That's the sort of thing that's not so suitable for stir fries because it can't heat to a high temperature. But what we do want is to make our carbon steel surface as smooth and naturally non-stick as possible. So let me show you after just one seasoning process here on my wok, let's see if we can cook an egg without disaster striking. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil here, my egg. Once your egg has got a little crispy, you should just be able to give it a slight sort of nudge and then that is really what you're looking for. So it's not really catching too much there. And now that's pretty good for a first use wok. You know you've done your seasoning process correctly when you can do that straight off the bat. So what do you do with your wok now? Well, the seasoning process has only just begun and every time you cook in the wok, it will develop further. And this is the way you do it. So take your dirty wok and clean it. Don't use any harsh chemicals here and try not to use any soap. If you have a wok cleaning brush, like the one that comes in my Mako kit, then use that. That's the perfect way to scrub off any stubborn bits. Once your wok is looking clean, just dry it off and then pop it back onto a medium heat. And we're gonna do the same thing we did at the very beginning. A little bit of oil and rub it in with paper towel. And then what I like to do to get like a head start on seasoning the entire bowl of the wok is to actually just move the wok around on your heat source, whether that's flame, electric or induction. That's for the Mako, of course. Depends on whether your wok is suitable for all those cooktops. And now you'll be able to see that the wok itself is starting to change color here. That's that seasoning going to work. The heat, the oil, it's just creating that patina which will build and build over time. So you can see after quite a bit of heating here, I'm starting to get some color here and it's just starting to change in that center part. This is your seasoning starting to take shape. Now what you're aiming for eventually is for your wok to look something like this. Now this wok is around about six months old and I use my Mako every day so it gets a really good workout and you can see the seasoning here has really developed a deep dark color. It looks beautifully oiled. It's oiled every time it's used exactly the way I just showed you. So this is what we would call a well-developed patina. The seasoning has been really baked in there and it has a wonderful naturally non-stick capability when I'm stir frying and cooking 
And this is where you start to get that magical thing, wok hay. So wok hay translates to the breath of the wok and it's what happens when this beautiful seasoning layer lets off its smoke and all its flavor and that's what you get from a beautifully seasoned wok. So you've been diligently working away at the seasoning and the patina in your wok and then disaster happens. You simmer something acidic for too long or you didn't wash up your wok properly and it looks like this. So this is what happens when your patina gets damaged. It looks splotchy, you can see that some of the patina and seasoning has worn off. It's okay though, because the carbon steel itself in your wok hasn't been damaged, it's just the seasoning coating that you've laid on top. So we can fix this. Put your wok onto a medium heat, start heating your wok up again, and this is the same oiling and drying process that we went through before. Add your oil, rub it in, and now you really want to concentrate on the parts where you've got the damaged patina. So hold that over the flame or your heat source and just be a little patient. This sort of damage is really common. It can happen when you're washing your wok too vigorously, if you've used harsh detergents or chemicals, and so this is something as a wok owner that you might need to do multiple times during the lifetime of your wok. Now in just that short amount of time, you can see we're now starting to get brown spots where the lighter spots used to be. So this is working really well. And what I like to do is just give it a good rub, let it cool down for a little bit, and then just do that process again. The reason I like to do this in stages with the cooling down and heating up is that obviously if you keep the wok heating and heating and heating, one, your fire alarms might go off and two, you do risk the wok popping or warping because you're heating an empty pan. So don't take it too far, just a little bit of sensible wok smoke is fine but not too much. So I've only done the oil and heat method two rounds through and already you can see that that patina is coming back. The previously light parts are now coloured a beautiful brown and that will only continue to improve as you use it and care for it each time. So when a lot of people think about stir fries, I think unfortunately they're thinking about the bad stir fry. You know what I mean? Like a really gloopy, wilty kind of thing that probably was not cooked in a beautifully seasoned wok. So the key points to a really good stir fry, I'm gonna run through as I'm cooking this recipe and you can use those techniques to cook any kind of brilliant stir fry that you like not the bad stir fry. Let's start off with the wok itself and you wanna get it heating up before you do anything. Medium high heat and wait for this, the little tendrils of smoke to appear. Okay, so this looks good to go and the heat here serves two purposes. Uh, one, if you don't heat any kind of pan up enough, food will actually stick to it, whether it's a wok or any other kind of pan. The other thing is that as the ingredients go into a wok, you want them to sear and cook quickly rather than sitting in a low temperature kind of surface and wilting. So two reasons why you wanna get the wok hot. Add the oil in. I always like to start with protein because the wok is hot and if I start with garlic or ginger, it's going to burn. So in goes my chicken. Now you'll notice that my chicken has been cut into fairly small pieces here. The small pieces will sear and cook quickly rather than stewing and becoming tough. So it's important that you don't cut the pieces too big. And you want to get your proteins moving, so stir frying and pushing your wok around. See how there's that, that smoke kind of generated every time I move the wok? That's the air temperature and the heat and the oil and the wok reacting to create that beautiful wok hay flavor that you want in a stir fry. Now the other thing here is that you will have seen quite a lot of perhaps like YouTube Chinese chefs or like restaurant chefs cooking over massive flame and they're like tossing everything and the flames are going off and everything's cooking really quickly. Well at home we don't really have that luxury so your heat is a lot softer than a restaurant wok burner. So what you need to do is give the ingredients time. Every time you add ingredients in, give the wok time to heat back up again. Otherwise, you'll have a whole pile of ingredients sitting in the wok and stewing and becoming that bad stir fry situation we were talking about. So now that my protein has done its thing, I'm gonna add in the aromatics. So the ginger, got some capsicum here as well. Now one little point on the capsicum here, you can see that rather than really thin kind of slices of capsicum, I've kept it kind of chunky. 
And what that does is that actually allows the capsicum to stay really lovely and crisp and tender and not start to like sog out the second it hits the wok. Now before I add my sauces, I want to show you what's going on in here. Because we have used really good wok technique, rather than there being like a big soupy mess in the bottom of my pan, I just have things looking lovely and glistening and kind of charred at the edges. That's exactly what you want. Now sauces. So I'm going in here with a really simple stir fry mix that I use at home. A little bit of oyster sauce. So I've got fish sauce here as well. A little bit of dark sweet soy sauce I like for a bit of colour sprinkling of white pepper and whenever I'm adding sauces I try to do it around the edge of the wok because it means that the sauces are immediately caramelizing and they're not sitting in the bottom of the pan again adding to that kind of like soupy texture they're just becoming yum straight away spring onion goes in at the end again because I want to keep it nice and fresh and there you go my friends a really simple stir fry but I mean look at this Really good wok technique means that your stir fry is amazing. Look at that. Ah.